Japan is expensive and coming here can leave a big dent in your budget. But there are ways to make it cheaper. In this video I will go over a couple of tips you can use to make your Japan trip more affordable. I will cover transportation, food, souvenirs and accommodation. When traveling Japan, one of the first options you should consider is using one of the many JR passes. They will allow you to travel parts or all of Japan using even the expensive high-speed bullet trains. There are a couple of them. The JR Pass will allow you to travel all of Japan Railway Company's extensive network. It is valid for 7, 14 or 21 days. Before purchasing it, you should check if that actually makes sense for you and you can use the calculator I've linked in the description box below. Here we have a drastic example going from Tokyo all the way south to Fukuoka, then up north to Sapporo and back to Tokyo again. You can clearly see that in this case you will save a lot of money by using the JR Pass. It's an easy decision. If you are a bit below breaking even, I still recommend you use the JR Pass because you will also use local trains and they will come at a couple of thousand yen. The JR Pass is not the only option you have. For example, the JR East Tohoku Pass allows you to travel all of Tohoku and also the extended Tokyo area. It can be used on 5 days within a 14 day time frame. This means, for example, on day 1 you could go from Tokyo to Sendai. On day 3 you could go from Sendai to Yamagata. On day 8 you could go from Yamagata to Aomori. Then on day 10 you could go back from Aomori to Tokyo. And on day 13 you can make a day trip to Mount Fuji. All of that with this one pass for 20,360 yen. The JR Tokyo White Pass is valid for 3 consecutive days and comes at 10,180 yen. It allows you to travel of course the extended Tokyo area, which also includes Karuizawa, so you could go snowboarding, but you could also make a trip to Mount Fuji in Kawaguchiko. It is really breathtakingly beautiful. Fantastic. I've never been there. There are many other JR passes for different areas of Japan, you can find an overview of them linked in the description box below. Of course, JR passes are not the only option you have. Japan has a variety of train providers and many of them offer some kind of value deal. For example, if you are in Tokyo, the Tokyo Metro Day Pass might be for you. It allows you to explore the city on Tokyo Metro's extensive network for a full day for only 600 yen. And then there are also electronic cash cards such as Suica and Pasmo. These are not only wildly convenient, but due to recent changes in the Japanese consumption tax system also allow you to save a couple of yen every time you ride a train in the Tokyo area. Of course, trains are not the only thing that allow you to go from A to B in Japan. For example, you can also use some of the low-cost airlines such as Vanilla, Peach or Jetstar, which can take you around popular Japanese cities like Sapporo, Sendai, Osaka, Hiroshima or Fukuoka for often less than 5,000 yen. These are low-cost carriers though, so their fare usually only includes one piece of hand luggage per person. Another option which offers great cost performance is using long-distance buses. They have an extensive network throughout Japan and come at roughly half the price of a bullet train ticket. They are not only much cheaper, but also much slower than the train, however. For example, on the route between Tokyo and Nagano City, which I use frequently, the bullet train takes around one and a half hours and the bus anywhere between three and a half and six, depending on the traffic. That's not necessarily a bad thing though. Taking a night bus will not only allow you to get to your target location, but also to sleep. So you're not only traveling cheaper, but also saving on one night in a hotel. If you don't want to rely on motorized transportation, you can also rent a bike. In some cities like Kyoto, this will give you a great bang for the buck and they have bike rental stations around every other corner. You can follow the rule of thumb. If there are many bike rentals, the city is probably easy to explore by bike as well. Please make sure to only park your bike in the designated locations though, otherwise it might get really expensive when you have to pay the ticket. And finally, last but not least, the absolutely cheapest and also by far most exhausting option is of course to take your own feet and walk. This is perfect if you don't have a fixed checklist or travel plan and also very exhausting in super large cities like Tokyo. However, if you allow yourself to take a little detour every now and then, you are bound to discover new things off the beaten path. For example, when I go to training, I always take the bicycle. and. Today, for the first time, I took the train and then I had to walk for about two kilometers. And just because of that, I discovered this beautiful, beautiful temple.
All the traveling will definitely make you hungry. Lucky you are in a country with such an amazing cuisine. Tokyo, for example, is the city with the most Michelin stars in the world, with almost twice as many as Paris, which comes second place. That being said, while you can get $15 Michelin star ramen in Tokyo, let's talk about other, cheaper options for now. I think an important thing to keep in mind is that this is Japan. This means, as a rule of thumb, Japanese food is cheap and non-Japanese food is not. So if I order my nice German schnitzel in one of the few German restaurants here, it will be more expensive than a horse mackerel with rice and miso soup in one of the many low-priced fish restaurants. Here's another rule of thumb. Eating in touristy areas is expensive, eating where salary men are is not. The first part is probably self-explanatory. Tourists bring money and therefore eating in touristy areas like Kabukicho in Tokyo will have more expensive sushi than if you eat in a department store in Yokohama. Salary men are Japanese office workers and usually, if they are married, the wife will take care of the money and will give them some pocket money. This means many of them are budget aware and frequent restaurants which have lunch menus are similar. So if you see many tourists inside of a restaurant or a sign outside saying we have an English menu, it might be more expensive than if you see many Japanese looking people in cheap suits. These rules of thumb aside, there's also a priority as to where you can get cheap food in Japan. On the very top are restaurants. Specialized restaurants exist in many variations, but on average they are expensive. Below them are family restaurants. These are jack-of-all-trade restaurants offering a variety of foods for reasonable prices, especially at lunchtime. They are usually chains, for example, Caesaria, Jonathan's or Coco's. Next are fast food restaurants. The popular American brands like McDonald's or Burger King also exist here, but what I recommend you do instead is visit one of the many beef ball restaurants like Yoshinoya, Skia or Matsuya. This is the one I often go to, especially if my family is not at home, because I'm a salary man in Japan. 600 yen dinner. After fast food restaurants, you will find vending machines. Most of them offer, of course, hot and cold beverages, but also these are better priced than restaurants at usually between 100 and 200 yen. And every now and then you will also run into a vending machine which offers food, like this beautiful French fry and chicken combination, which came at 370 yen. If you're wondering how it tasted now, probably as good as you think. Cheaper still and definitely tastier are convenience stores. There's always one close to you and you can find a variety of drinks both alcoholic and non-alcoholic. Onigiri rice balls, salads, desserts and other microwavable foods. All in all, you will be able to get a full meal there, conveniently heated up for you for between 5 and 10 US dollars. That being said, convenience stores strong points are convenience, not offering the cheapest price. Therefore, the next option on the cheap food list is to visit supermarkets. Here you can find just about everything your heart desires, for better prices than at convenience stores, vending machines or of course restaurants. They also offer freshly made foods which usually have the date and timestamp at which they were created written on them. And if they get too old, they will be marked down which allows you to get them even cheaper. And last but not least, the holy grail of cheap food in Japan are speciality stores, specifically green grocers. These stores offer better cost performance than supermarkets on vegetables and fruits 80% of the time. This means if you buy multiple items, you will be better off. How close they are to your accommodation depends on the location. But for me, close to my station is this one, this one and this one. Now lastly, some people might recommend you to get Nomi Hodai, Tabe Hodai combinations, which means all you can drink, all you can eat. They are usually valid for two hours and within this two hour time frame you can eat and drink everything you want for the same price. However, from my personal vast experience across countless company parties, I have found out that going by the menu a la carte is usually on average much cheaper. For me, an evening Having an all-you-can-eat, all-you-can-drink combination comes at around 5 to 6,000 yen per person, while going a la carte is between 3 and 4,000. So my personal recommendation would be, if you're planning to go out in a large group, then you should still try to go by the menu and not all-you-can-eat, all-you-can-drink. At some point, sad but true, your fantastic trip will come to an end. 
you will need something to remind you about Japan and also something to bring to your friends back home. You will need souvenirs. Personally, when it comes to souvenirs, I have two options. The first one is it's pre-ordered, the person knows what he or she wants and in this case there's not a lot of margin for saving money. In the second case, there is. Especially when it comes to kitchen items like chopsticks, teacups, plates or even fans. How much is each of these? 110 yen or about 1 dollar and 10 cents. Where can you get them? In every 100 yen store. You can also get lots of items with funny English written on them. Happy life, the burger with great taste. And great costumes to make your friends the eye catcher at the next carnival party. If you want more than that, then I recommend you go to one of the many Japanese second-hand stores like Book Off or Second Street. It is worth noticing that A. Japan are usually very careful with their items and B. The stores purchase the items so they make sure that they are actually in good condition and work as promised. If also second-hand stores don't allow you to find the souvenirs you need, many Japanese stores offer tax-free shopping for tourists. The idea is that if you go home to your home country, you have to pay taxes on the new items. So in order for you not to get taxed twice, they will deduct the consumption tax, which is 10%. Not all stores offer this option, but many of the bigger stores have it, especially in clothing and electronics. If you want to get a cheap hotel in Japan, it's important to consider three things. The first one is when to go. The second is in which area to go. And the third one is where to get the best price. For the first one, Japan has busy traveling seasons, such as the cherry blossom season, golden week or obon. Not so popular are for example the summer months because it's just so hot and also beginning of December because it's close to the New Year's holidays and nobody will take their days off yet. As for where to go, every city in Japan usually has a more expensive and a cheaper area. And in Tokyo the cheaper area would be around Ueno station or around Nippori station. As for where to get the best price, of course there are webpages like booking.com or expedia.com but for me personally I found the best deals on agoda.com which is by the way not a sponsor of this video. Anyhow, let's take a look at the webpage. As we have said we go to Ueno because it's cheap. Then we will go from let's say April 22nd to 24th and I'm alone. Well, And there you go, for example this one here. Instead of 20,000 yen, it's just 7,000. Take a look here. Four stars, very nice, great discount. And as you can see here, it's very close to Nippori Station. And Nippori is on the Yamanote line, which is excellent connection to anywhere in Tokyo. And it's also close to a Tokyo Metro Station. So if you don't want to take JR, then take Tokyo Metro. If you have, for example, the Tokyo Metro Day Pass, that's super accessible as well. Something you might have noticed is that I selected weekdays. And obviously they are cheaper. So another good tip would be if you are staying in popular areas which are loved by tourists, then you should go there during the week and not over the weekend because then it will be more expensive because it's so popular. I also want to give you one personal recommendation. As you might know, I lived in Nagano for some time. And if you ever go there, for whatever reason, go skiing or go into the mountains, my favorite hotel it's right next to the station and it's called Dormi Inn. It's actually a chain, they have a couple of more hotels. And it's great, it's a western style hotel, but they have a hot spring bath on the top of the roof. So you can be outside, under the stars, above the city, and soak in a hot tub. 23% off, great deal. Maybe you can get it even cheaper if you book a little bit in advance. This is the hot spring, you're outside, on the roof, under the stars, taking a hot bath. It's fantastic, especially if you're coming in winter. So if you are going to snowboard or ski and are staying in Nagano city for a night, then you should definitely do this. So that's my big hotel recommendation. And whenever friends would visit me in Nagano, I would send them there. Of course, normal hotels are not the only thing you can book when traveling Japan. For example, capsule hotels are also pretty popular. They are essentially boxes in which you can sleep. They are called capsules. And as you would imagine, the privacy is not so much and your private space is also not that great. I've been to one only once and it was on a day where I was very tired 
and when I arrived I wished I had taken a proper hotel instead with a little more privacy. It also was very cheap so that was good, however it was also pretty old and it smelled a little funny. That being said, in the end because I was with friends and it was a new experience and I kind of got used to it and adapted, it actually turned out to be quite fun. Another option that would be between normal hotel and capsule hotel are business hotels. Business hotels are essentially for business people which have a little more money to spend than for capsule hotels. Usually they go around 5000 yen per night which is around $50. I have one which I recommend which is in Shinjuku, it's called Tokyo Business Hotel. I will link it in the description box below. Another popular chain would be APA, APA Hotels, which are everywhere in Japan. They are not as cheap, I think. I think they could be cheaper, but it's a reliable quality and you know what you're getting. Airbnb would be another option, especially if you're traveling in a group. Personally, I've done this a couple of times and if you're lucky, then it's like a hotel on the high end. And if you're not so lucky, then it's yeah, way worse, maybe just above sleeping on the streets. I've had two not so nice experiences so far in Japan. One time was in Kyoto where I was with friends and we had a room without windows, without anything, just futons on the floor and that's it. And we are promised a Wi-Fi router, a mobile one, and we got one but it was out of data and then the replacement was as well. And the second time was when I still lived in Nagano and we went to Tokyo to go to Disneyland and the room when we arrived was not cleaned so everything was dirty and it turns out Airbnb's service is a little hard to get and uh, thankfully after some time somebody came and cleaned up but still it was not a nice experience and ever since I've stopped doing this with my family. And the next option if you don't want to do Airbnb if you really have a tiny little budget then you can do couch surfing which is for free. So you ask strangers essentially to sleep in their apartment on their couch and this way of course you make great experiences, you get to know locals, they will maybe even show you around and it's for free. And Japan is pretty safe so probably there will be no issues but still maybe it's a good idea to tell your friends where you're going before you do that. And these are my tips for saving money when traveling Japan. If you have some tips to share that I have not mentioned yet then please share them in the comments because I like saving money as well. For now thank you for watching and see you next time.